Good morning, dear students. Today in dermatology, I like to talk about dermatophyte infection first. Then I'll move on to the discussion of viral wars and molluscum contagiosum. Then if time is there for us, then I will talk about scabies as well. These are very short type of topics, but really interesting and common in the clinical practice. They are very common. You will see a lot of cases of this in clinical practice when you start working with the dermatology or skin clinic. Now, let's talk about dermatophyte infection today. Now, these are the types of uh, dermatophyte or the dermatophyte genera, okay, which cause human infection, trichophyton, microsporum, and epidermophyton. So trichophyton causes infection of the skin, hair, and the nails. This is skin, and these are called skin appendages. So all three, skin, hair, and nail are infected by trichophyton. Whereas uh, microsporum causes infection of the skin and hair only, and epidermophyton regarding the skin and the nail. Okay, so uh, these are some of the important points. But rather than what they uh, infect, the name of the these three important dermatophyte would be asked to the student. So repeat again: trichophyton, microsporum, and epidermophyton. Now let's elaborate on them. These dermatophytes are keratophilic fungi. Keratophilic means they love to infect keratin. Okay, keratin and keratin is present in our skin because keratin is a protein which is produced by keratinocyte and those are the skin cells. They affect the superficial layer of the skin that is epidermis because keratin is present in epidermis. That is the reason. And they are transmitted by contact with infected person and animal. They are contagious type of illness, okay, or contagious infection. One person can easily uh, transmit this infection to the other, especially if they share, uh, you know, the things between them. If they share the cum, if if the uh, you know many people, uh, you know, uh, for example, many friends are sharing the same cum when they are combing the hair. Inside the family, many people are sharing the same cum. For example, they are sharing the same towel, they are sharing the same bed, sharing the same cloth. These are the important way by which this fungal infection is transmitted from person to person. Let's move on. <clears throat> now, what are the predisposing factors for this uh, fungal infection? Poor nutrition or malnutrition, poor hygiene, it's important is poor hygiene actually, if somebody is not taking care of herself or himself, tropical climate where the person sweats a lot, and moist area is very important predisposing area or site for fungal infection. Atopy, okay, atopy, it's a allergic condition. Atopy means, you know, somebody has tendency to develop allergic reaction. Like atopic dermatitis is a very important example in dermatology. Contact with infected animal, people are fomites, okay. Like if animals are having that particular type of problem, another person or homites means the infected or the contaminated cloth, towel, cum, and all, all that thing which are used by the patient. If other people share them, you know, they can easily get this type of infection. And don't forget about the debilitating disease. Terminally ill patient, they cannot take care of themselves. And if other people also ignore them, there is very high chance of having this type of infection. Now we are moving on to the important part. These are the different types of dermatophyte infection we have. So these are tinea capitis, okay, tinea corporis, tinea crudis, tinea barbi, tinea pedis, tinea manum, and tinea ungum. Tinea ungum is also known as onychomycosis. Now, capitis, okay, is head. So fungal infection 
or dermatophyte infection of the scalp or head is called tinea capitis. Tinea corporis, the whole trunk, okay, trunk or the body, you can say. Cruris, what is cruris? Tinea cruris means which area? Which area is cruris? Any idea? It is inguinal region. Okay, inguinal, inguinal region, exactly. Inguinal region is called tinea cruris. Tinea barbi is the beard area. Beard area. If somebody is having infection of the beard by this fungal, you know, or causes, then tinea barbi. Pedis is foot. The dorsum, dorsal surface of the foot is usually infected there. Manum, okay, dorsal surface of the hand. Okay. Then ongium is the nail, also known as onychomycosis. So one by one, we are going to talk about this. Okay, let's proceed further. Now, before we enter into the uh, you know, specific type of uh, a tinea infection, let's talk about the general one. What does a typical lesion look like? Please listen properly. You can diagnose a lot of these conditions on your own after going through this class. They look annular or arcuate like plaque. This is a different shape of the lesion, you know, annular, a little bit rounded type of lesion, but it is actively spreading outwards. Centrifugal spread, that is spreading from the trunk to the extremity. It is going peripherally or going towards the extremity. That is called centrifugal spread. If we look at the A's, those A's are having papule as well as vesicle. They can have postule and they are having a lot of scale. So let me elaborate on this because these are important dermatological term. Papule is a small elevation on the skin or a small nodule on the skin, which is less than five millimeter in size. That is called papule. And we can feel this papule very easily. So papule are solid elevation from the skin, which are less than five millimeter in size. Vesicles, are fluid filled blisters, again, very small, less than five millimeter in size. And usually the fluid is clear. Postules, post filling, okay, vesicle. The vesicle, if postule is also vesicle. In vesicle, there is clear fluid. In postule, there is pus. Okay, that is only difference. So you can also say infected vesicle. Scaling is flecking, okay, flecking. So these are quite common in case of A's of the uh, dermatophyte infection. Another very important point is the center. The center is relatively clear. So what is the you know, point you need to understand here? The, the lesion is actively growing towards the peripheral part. Okay, so center is relatively clear and peripheral part is involved. Now see this, okay, all of you uh, focus here. See this, this is the central part of the lesion and here is the peripheral part. This disease is actively involved in the peripheral area. Started from the central and slowly clearing in the central and expanding towards the periphery. Now, this is even better. See this relative clearing at the center, but active type of lesion in the periphery, active lesion. And it is spreading all the time peripherally. This is called ringome. Another term for this is ringome infection or dermatophyte infection or tinea. Now, see this, there are some probably vesicles, okay? The vesicle has a rupture and we, we don't know, maybe it may be postural because the discharge is important to see here and it is exactly on the A's. This is on the A's, see another one here. Another one here, it has ruptured already, okay? So this type of things also can be there. This is central clearing, okay? Active lesion in the periphery and on the A's, there are some vesicles, some postules, some papules maybe. So these are the important features. Now let's enter into the different types. 
The first of them is tinea capitis. Regarding the age, okay, this is very common during childhood from the age of three to seven, but any other you know, age group can also be affected. They are commonly transmitted by fomites like hairbrushes, hat, and barber's instrument. Whenever they come in contact with our scalp hair, okay, the, the fungal infection can be transmitted. This is important point. This is common in overcrowded environment and poor living condition because of the poor personal hygiene. If somebody, uh, the hair is contaminated, but they don't take shower, okay, they allow that fungal fungus to remain there, then only the infection can occur. If they quickly take shower, if they get rid of that, uh, you know, contamination or infection there, then no problem will happen. This tinea capitis produces disquiet patch or partial alopecia on the scalp. So because of this, you know, patch, okay, there will be loss of the hair in that area. And it looks very patchy type of hair loss. It is not, you know, hair loss everywhere on the scalp, nothing like that. There are multiple area where the hair loss can be found. If this is a patchy involvement, if only one area is involved, then there only the hair loss occurs. Another thing, if hair loss has not occurred till now, that hair can be easily pluckable, means can be easily removed, sometimes even without pain. A normal hair, if we remove, it will cause considerable pain. But this type of hair, because they are diseased hair, you know, so there will be no pain when we pluck them out. So they are easily pluckable here. Now, there are three types or three patterns of tinea capitis we have. The first of them is called non-inflammatory type. So there is no active inflammation seen when we examine the patient. And these are caused by anthropophilic type of dermatophyte. Anthropophilic. What do you mean by this anthropophilic term? What is mean by that? Anyone? Anthropophilic means what? Anthropophilic means, uh, you know, these fungus, they love to infect human being. Anthropophilic, they love to infect human being rather than animals. So that is anthropophilic type of dermatophyte. They lead to partial alopecia, see here, partial alopecia and peripheral scaling, which can be easily seen on the scalp. I mean, central lesion uh, is there, which is relatively clear. And on the peripheral part, there is active scale formation. If hair is not lost till now, that hair becomes lusterless. There is no natural shiny okay, uh, appearance of the hair that is called lusterless hair. They may be broken, they may be easily pluckable, or they may change the color into gray or gray black or completely gray. Means the color of the hair is also changed because this is a disease here. These are some important points in non-inflammatory type of tinea capitis. Now, what are the other types? Let's see the picture first. Uh, these are the non-inflammatory type. You see this. See, look at the alopecia site. This is patchy type of hair loss, alopecia. Okay? The hairs are fine here and in other parts of the scalp. I cannot see any signs of inflammation here, no redness, no discharge, nothing like that. That's why it is known as non-inflammatory type. And this is another one, sure, okay? Uh, probably this person, you know, for the sake of the treatment, the hairs has, have been removed, but this is the hair loss because of the infection right here. In this area, uh, the person has shaved the hair maybe. Now another one, this is a good one. See here, there is a small uh, postule or a vesicle at the border. 
and relative central clearing, but active peripheral area, okay, and there is hair loss from the site. So this is a typical tinea capitis lesion. Now other patterns of the tinea capitis are carrion and the favus. So this carrion and favus. Now carrion is caused by zoophilic fungus. Okay, zoophilic fungus means this fungus they love to infect the animal. Zoophilic means they love to infect the animal. Somehow they have infected the human being as well. So this is microsporum canis is one of the example here. M stands for microsporum here. It leads to boggy swelling. Boggy means irregular type of swelling. Some of the swelling in some area, then other area may be smooth. Then again, another swelling may be there. So overall appearance of that swelling is uneven or irregular. That is called boggy. There may be postule and lymphadenopathy in the regional site. So if we are talking about the skull, the regional lymph nodes would be a preauricular lymph node, occipital lymph node, and even upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes because they drain uh, you know, ultimately there. Favus is the most severe type of tinea capitis, which is caused by trichophyton sonleni. T stands for trichophyton here, okay? Trichophyton sonleni is the causative agent. And in this condition, the number of yellowish circular and cop separate crust, okay? this crust are, are present because of extensive involvement because of the inflammation there. So alloys, circular cup shaped crust, which are known as scutula, okay? And they are grouped in patches like a piece of honeycomb. When we see the picture, it will be very clear to you. The small crust are there and this crust uh, completely cover that area. And it doesn't look at all. It looks very severe type of, uh, you know, involvement of the skull. And another important point is they are foul smelling as well. So, favus. So, let me repeat again three types of tinea capitis. The uh, least, you know, a least complicated type is called non inflammatory type, which is more common also, fortunately. The second type is called carrion, and the third type is called favus. Favus is the most severe one. Have a look here. Okay. See this. Look at this here. Okay. This is definitely inflammatory condition, and there is a you know infection going on as well. Okay. Uh, here the active infection is going on. See this. I can see a lot of pustules on the surface and looks very red also. I cannot call it non-inflammatory. Okay. This is the carrion type. Now look at the favors. These are the scutula, which we are talking about. Okay, these are the crust, and this is a foul smelling a type of crust. Look at the hair loss, extensive hair loss. Probably they have removed the crust from here, you know, remove the crust from here. So this is the most severe type of uh, tinea capitis. What are the differential diagnosis of tinea capitis now? That means, what are the other condition which looks similar? The common differential diagnosis are alopecia. There are so many different types of alopecia, but alopecia here, what I want to say is alopecia areata. Okay, alopecia areata. Now, can you tell me what is alopecia areata? Yes. It's an autoimmune local Exactly, it is autoimmune. Yes, it is autoimmune type of hair loss. Hair loss is there, but the cause of that hair loss is autoimmune disease, alopecia areata. And the hallmark of alopecia areata is from the area where there is hair loss, the area looks very, very smooth, smooth. It doesn't look dirty at all. There are no flaking present. It's absolutely important point, alopecia areata. Because this is an autoimmune mechanism or disease, there may be some other autoimmune disease present in the patient. So I need to find that out. 
I need to ask some important question. And if those questions uh, are positive, means the reply is positive from the patient, I need to go for investigation also. Psoriasis is another, you know, uh, differential diagnosis here. Psoriasis. This is the chronic skin disorder where the life cycle of the epidermal cell or keratinocytes are very, very reduced. So in this case, there's no loss of the hair, but there are silver scales present. In very, you know, severe type of involvement, the hair loss may be there, okay? But usually there is no loss of the hair and it is uh, highlighted by silver scale present there. Classical color of the scale, silver scale. Seborrheic dermatitis is a greasy type of involvement. A greasy, oily type of involvement. And in this condition, there is diffuse hair loss. Apart from the scalp, even the back of the neck, okay, and some forehead area, and sometimes even the nasal area may also be affected by seborrheic dermatitis. Now, let's look at the picture. What are these? See here. This is alopecia areata. Look at the a site of hair loss, okay? Look at the site of hair loss. It looks very, very smooth. It doesn't look dirty at all. This is the hallmark picture of alopecia areata. This is psoriasis, okay? This psoriasis, look at the color of the scale here. This is, you know, silver color scale. This is typical. And here, okay, this is uh, seborrheic dermatitis or seborrheic keratosis. This is very common in the newborn babies or infant or infantile age. And these scales are very difficult to remove from there. These are greasy type of scale. They get attached there, okay? And the treatment is we, we apply certain shampoo, certain keratolytic shampoo or even antifungal shampoo and that will really help the child. Now, we'll, we'll talk about the treatment later on, but if I ask you the treatment, the answer is very easy. All of you will say antifungal drug because these are the fungi which are responsible here. If the condition is not very serious, we can give topical antifungal drug. If the condition looks worse or severe, then you can give systemic antifungal drug for a relatively good amount of time. Now let's talk about tinea corporis. Tinea corporis is the tinea infection of the body or the trunk. All ages are affected. It is very common in hot and humid climate where there is a lot of sweating. It is seen mainly in the trunk or the upper part of the limbs. And the common features are there is mild pruritus or it may be completely asymptomatic in the beginning. But later on, when they see that particular lesion, you know, rather than any symptom, when they see that lesion, or when the family members see that lesion, then they say, oh, you are developing this. Have you noted that? And then the patient will be aware of the situation and then, okay, let me go to the dermatologist. And that's how uh, they seek the medical attention. The other features are presence of macule and papules at the age, at the age, you know. And it is also having centrifugal spread and the shape of the lesion may be annular or arcuate. This is a very typical picture of tinea corporis, typical ringworm lesion or dermatophyte lesion. See this central clearing, and uh, it is uh, involving the peripheral part actively. There is a, here is another one in the same patient. Now, there are some more pictures of tinea corporis I have, you know, compiled from the internet site. See here, these are typical ringworm infection, ringworm, a rounded type of infection, disc shaped infection. And this is a very severe type of uh, tinea corporis, severe type. Almost the whole part of the body is affected here. Now, another type is called tinea cruris. Tinea cruris. This tinea cruris is also known as jock itch because of the specific site which is involved there. 
it is seen in groin thigh and scrotum in case of male because that uh, you know local uh, infection may spread in the surrounding area it is quite common in hot and humid climate because of excessive sweating in the groin area and if we do not make that area dry there is high chance of fungal growth there even candida is very common in that type of setting the features of tinea cruris are there is maceration and there is friction both are quite common because of moisture this is all about moisture there continuous or constant type of moisturing along with fungal infection can lead to maceration of that skin maceration means the skin look like a bit of fold a bit of elevated okay and some of the flecking are coming out from there and they are the lesion with clear margin okay now one point uh, till now what i am talking is the margin of the fungal infections are active may the means they have a scale uh, presence and the central area is clear but in this condition i am talking the margins can also be clear now the reason behind it is because of the moisture which is present whenever there is moist area remember the the scales are not properly seen that is the reason now look at this uh, you know important picture here this is the jock itch or tinea cruris means dermatophyte infection of the groin area you can clearly see here uh, this is the involvement here even scrotum is affected and even you know uh, buttock area a natal cleft it is called natal cleft and upper part of the thigh on the back side are also affected and i cannot see you know those important scale here where are the scale okay it's not commonly seen now another type of a uh, tinea infection is tinea barbi okay, tinea barbi so this is common in adult male in the beard area it is seen that's why the term barbi and the common features are there is superficial scaling and it may look erythematous or red in appearance the shape is it's a annular type of lesion and if there is a deeper infection it looks similar to carian carian is a severe type of uh, uh, tinea capitis okay inflammatory type so deeper infection may almost look like carian and one of the very important feature is there is loss of facial hair so at the affected site there are there is no beard okay and this is a, a patchy hair loss is there and another uh, important point i like to highlight is even alopecia areata can lead to loss of hair from the bearded area so don't don't uh, immediately think about uh, you know tinea barbi here it may be a, still a case of alopecia areata so again the same point will come here look at that site very carefully it it looks very very clean okay there is not any scale present that probably this is a case of alopecia areata whereas if there are some scales present uh, you know if it looks erythematous okay if there are some signs of inflammation there that probably this is a case of tinea barbi now now look here okay the tinea barbi it looks a little bit uh, severe so probably this is a case of carian here case of carian maybe Now, tinea pedis okay this is tinea of the feet area tinea pedis tinea of the feet area it is quite common and this is common during the summer and in the rainy season again because of excessive sweating or excessive you know moistening of the foot men more commonly you know affected than the women probably because they they often go outside or maybe they are the workers these type of workers the heavy you know job or machinery workers are usually male and they often wear shoes and things like that 
so their feet is wet all the time probably that is the reason why it is more common there okay otherwise it can be seen in female also it all depends on what type of job what type of occupation they are having three patterns which are seen in tinea pedis are intertrigo or athlete's foot papulo squamous type and vesiculo bullous type so among them this intertrigo or athlete foot is very common let's see what is this let's see this this is tinea pedis okay uh, dorsum of the foot and other parts of the you know foot are also affected look at the nails which are also involved here but involvement of the nail is called onychomycosis so different terms is used for that but it may be a part of the same disease process definitely nails are affected here look at the color look at the thickness of the nail and this this uh, you know part is also badly affected now this is the okay intertrigo intertrigo in between the toes there is fungal infection now it can be easily confused with candidiasis as well candidiasis also causes infection uh, you know if it is moist all the time and the if the uh, question is asked to you how to differentiate between them you can simply say i scrape the tissue from there and send to the lab kws mounting is done and and if that shows mycelial or hyphal form of uh, you know fungus then it is dermatophyte if it is shows yeast like fungus predominantly then it is candida now another is tinea manum okay. tinea manum look at the dorsum of the hand which is involved typical dermatophyte lesion tinea manum there is erythema okay hyperkeratosis means flakiness or excessive scaling or flaking and uh, usually it involves the one side only unilateral involvement now another important type of fungal uh, infection is onychomycosis that is fungal infection of the nail onychomycosis the common causes are dermatophyte candida and other molds molds are also a type of fungi the feature of tinea ungum or onychomycosis are the nail becomes thick and they become discolored so naturally we have white and shiny nail but if our nail becomes thick and discolored like they look yellow they look excessively white they look uh, you know black sometime okay, they look they look a little bit you know between black or green sorry uh, yellow or green something like that then all of these color are abnormal nail can become brittle they can be easily broken because they are diseased nail and the pieces breaking up very easily or the whole nail can also be lost from the toe or finger and another point uh, if we take uh, you know if you prescribe antifungal drug there it takes a long long time for that nail to be replaced by the normal one that's why onychomycosis treatment is a little bit challenging now there are four classic types of onychomycosis they are distal sub ungal onychomycosis okay white superficial onychomycosis okay then proximal sub ungal onychomycosis and candidal onychomycosis so these are the four so let's talk a little bit about each of the important point the distal sub ungal onychomycosis is the most common form of tinea ungum and is usually caused by trichophyton rubrum it's a one of the species of trichophyton a type of dermatophyte which invade the nail bed and the underside of the nail plate okay nail bed and the underside of the nail plate so this is distal type white superficial onychomycosis is caused by fungal infection invasion or infection of the 
superficial layers of the nail superficial layers of the nail and they form white islands on the plate that's why they are called white superficial onychomycosis and they are not very common they count only for the 10% of the total onychomycosis case so they are just the type you know the, the third one is called proximal sub angle onychomycosis is a fungal penetration of the newly formed nail plate through the proximal nail fold now some of the student may be confused where which is the proximal site and which is the distal site in the nail it's very easy okay the the part of the nail which is uh, towards the you know finger okay towards the finger or upper part of the finger uh, is the proximal one and other other part is the distal one it's the same like any other uh, part of the finger it is the least common form of tinea ungum uh, in healthy people but is found more commonly when the patient is immunocompromised is a proximal type and fourth is a candidal type this candida species can also invade the fingernail okay which usually occur in those people who frequently immerse their hand in water means their hand is wet all the time like the person whose whose profession is to wash the cloth to wash the dishes okay they are the one and this normally requires the prior damage of the nail so in one sentence uh, we can summarize this onychomycosis is the involvement of the nail by the fungus most commonly caused by dermatophyte but one of the type may be candida now see this okay, look at this nail here okay these nails are definitely abnormal any one of you can see there okay and uh, if we want to see which fungus is responsible we need to we need to clip the nail and send to the lab and another one look at the color of the nail look at the thickness this nail looks very brittle now what are the uh, other uh, differential diagnosis here let's quickly take the name here they are alopecia areata already discussed psoriasis pityriasis capitis also known as seborrheic dermatitis these three are very important differential diagnosis of tinea capitis we talked about discoid eczema can be a differential diagnosis of tinea corporis discoid eczema or even tinea capitis sometimes it is a patchy you know disc separate type of eczema candidal intertrigo is a differential diagnosis of dermatophyte intertrigo isn't it because both of them can cause infection of the those uh, web spaces between the toes and psoriasis of the nail can be confused sometimes with onychomycosis but psoriasis is a completely different condition let's move further now the final uh, parts are investigation and the treatment now what investigation we can do in this case what is kos preparation we get a sample first and then we do kos preparation then this kos preparation uh, will show hyphal or mycelial form of the fungi because dermatophytes are mycelial type of fungi we can do culture but not routinely done in clinical practice and another type of investigation is called woods light or woods lamp uh, examination now see that yesterday also we talked a little bit about this this woods lamp is a small handheld device that uses black light to illuminate the areas of the skin and uh, during this examination you know we preferably make that environment a bit dark the presence of certain bacteria or fungi or change in the pigmentation of the skin will cause the affected area of the skin to change color under the light so different color change will occur there okay and those color change will tell the examiner yes something is wrong there then some other detailed investigation can be done which will confirm the diagnosis so this is the importance of woods light or woods lamp examination
Now, the final part is the treatment. So how we are doing the treatment of this fungal infection, the different types. Some you know, important uh, messages we should give to our patient are, they should maintain local hygiene and dryness of that area. Fungal infection just flourishes in case of moist area, okay? So we, we just uh, give uh, our advice to keep that area dry. Avoid synthetic cloth, avoid synthetic cloth, which, which may cause a bit of sweating there. Prophylactic talc powder is advised. This powder form, because this talc powder will keep that area dry. That is the only you know, reason why it is given, talc powder. And there are some portion or some people who sweat a lot. Remember that it's an individual variation, especially in the fold area like under the axilla, in the groin area, in between the you know, toes and something like that, they sweat a lot. And in these areas commonly have fungal infection. So keep those area dry. The important drugs which we prescribe are imidazoles or triazole group. Under the imidazole group, we have clotrimazole, miconazole, sulconazole, and ketoconazole. Any one of them can be prescribed. And among the triazoles, we have fluconazole and itraconazole. These are the classification of antifungal drug. Now, clotrimazole and miconazole, they are very, very commonly used topical antifungal therapy. Topical antifungal therapy. Whereas these triazoles, they are used as a systemic form. Now look at this topical therapy. They should be applied for at least two weeks for any type of fungal infection. Or one other way of counseling our patient is apply until you are sure that the disease is no more there. Because they do not cause much of the you know, side effect there. But if they apply routinely, nicely for two weeks, then most of the you know, mild to moderate type of fungal infection will disappear. Systemic therapy is given for tinea corporis in extensive type of skin infection. If the person is having immunocompromised condition or if they have already tried the topical antifungal therapy, but if it is resistant, then we can go for systemic therapy. Systemic means oral, you know, oral antifungal drug. Itraconazole is mainly used for this purpose or even ketoconazole can be used. Now, an important question which is asked to the student is, how do you manage a case of onychomycosis? Onychomycosis. This is a, you know, a bit of challenging type of treatment. Now, look at here. The commonly used drugs are torbinafin and grishofulvin. Torbinafin and grishofulvin. Torbinafin is mainly used uh, for anicomycosis than grishofulvin. And it is given for six weeks for fingernail and 12 weeks for the toenail. Six weeks for fingernail and 12 weeks for the toenail. So see this, it's a week, it's not a days, you know, week, it's a long treatment. 12 weeks means three month treatment uh, for the onychomycosis. So most of the patient, they leave the medicine in between, in the middle, they discontinue taking medicine and it is not going to get better. The principle behind this long, you know, duration of therapy here is nail, you know, it doesn't get its blood supply. Nail gets nutrition from the nail bed. So the medicine should penetrate that, okay? Especially uh, the, the, the nail, which is already got better, okay? Remember our nail is constantly growing all the time and it is, you know, lost also. So all that diseased nail should be lost and it should be replaced by the healthy one. And that healthy nail is no more infected. So that takes time. That's why it is a long duration. And grishofulvin is an alternative drug. It is used for much longer than torbinafin, usually for six to 12 months. And trust me, no people can take it continuously for six to 12 months. They leave it in the middle. That's why this drug is not very popular. 
carbinafine is uh, more commonly used than brucefolin. Okay, so at the end, I like to uh, request you all to like the video as much as possible, share it among your friends, and subscribe to the channel so that it will encourage me a lot for the future videos and recordings. Thank you so much.